The 2013 season had it all for the Arizona Dimebacks. A trade of an up-and-coming star, a breakout season for a young pitcher, an MVP candidate, tons of roster turnover, well, blown saves galore, walk-off win after walk-off win after walk-off win, a brawl, a trade of an opening day starter. But at the end of the day, the D-back season began and ended in the same fashion, with an even record. Hi and welcome to another edition of Venom Vision. For ArizonaSports.com, I'm Dave Dolberg. October is finally here and well, postseason baseball in the Valley is not. There are no parties to celebrate, no banners to hang. No, oh, this wasn't the D-back season. Well, they marketed themselves off of being gritty and grinders in old school baseball. At the end of the day, the word that describes the D-backs in 2013, it's consistency. They were a model of consistency, a 500 record. They never won more than five games in a row. They never lost more than five games in a row. They were nine games above 500 at home and nine games below 500 on the road. They're around 500 against left-handed pitchers and around 500 against right-handed pitchers. Look, I won't bore you with any more stats. They are the quintessential 500 team, a model of consistency, although this consistency points to being stagnant. And the S word in sports, there's no greater curse. Not bad enough where people don't care, but not good enough for it to matter come October. If you want to look at the 2013 Arizona Diamondbacks, I compare it to a B minus C plus movie. It's entertaining. You'll go and see it. You know the plot. It's not that original although there might be some twists and turns along the way. But at the end of the day, it's not going to compete for an Oscar. This team had a lot of headlines and a lot of interesting moments, and it kept fans interested. But when it came time to October, well, just like four of the last five teams in Arizona, they were left out in the cold. But let's get happy. It's the final segment of Venom Vision. So let's switch gears and head on over to the Around the Diamond segment, where this time we celebrate the top pitcher and the MVP for the team in 2013. When looking at the team's top pitcher in 2013, conventional wisdom would point to Patrick Corbin. The young left-hander, after barely making the team, started 12-1, was considered one of the best pitchers in the National League. He was an NL All-Star, and despite a sluggish September, he still managed to lead the team in wins. But it's Venom Vision, so conventional wisdom doesn't apply. We go with long reliever Josh Colmenter. And he wasn't even really a long reliever. He was the ultimate utility pitcher, a guy who in the second inning or 16th inning you could rely on. He led all National League relievers in innings pitched and won all five of his games in extra innings. He didn't have a great September, one and three with a six ERA, but Josh Colmenter is our pitcher of the year. And the MVP, well, it's no surprise. It's first baseman Paul Goldschmidt. I could list all the stats that Goldschmidt has had this season leading the team, but those are stats that he's not just leading the team in, he's leading all the National League. Home runs, RBIs, OPS, slugging percentage. He has them all, and he's in the top five and several others. The baseball writers probably won't acknowledge him when it comes time to award the MVP at the end of the season, but that doesn't mean we can't honor him. We can't celebrate his season. I know the Dimebacks ended 81-81, and 81, and there wasn't a lot to cherish and celebrate, but if there is one thing, it's Paul Goldschmidt's season. It was the 15 stolen bases, the 997 fielding percentage, all the home runs he hit in the ninth inning or later, the walk-off home runs, the late-inning heroics, but most of all it was the humility and the dignity in which he played the game with. He wasn't a quote machine. He wasn't going to give you everything you wanted to hear from a star athlete, but he was the ultimate professional. If there's great news in 2013 heading into next season, it's Paul Goldschmidt. The team doesn't have to look anywhere for the next face of their franchise. They already have him. His number is 44. Well, that does it for Venom Vision, the final Venom Vision. I'd like to thank our great videographer and wonderful interns for making this video possible throughout the year, and you, the fans, for watching. If you'd like to submit a tweet or ask me anything about the offseason going into the spring, you can always shoot me one at the Double D at our station's Twitter account at azsports620. Until next year, thanks for always watching and supporting it. For ArizonaSports.com, I'm Dave Dolberg.